Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Enorita James. In my channel, I take you by the hand and show you how to transit from manual pattern drafting to digital pattern drafting. I have been doing a series on Simly 2D, an open source, completely free CAD pattern drafting software. I've done some two videos introducing you to Simly 2D, showing you how to download Simly 2D. And in my last video, I showed you how to create measurement sets in Simly 2D. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the pattern drafting tools in Simly 2D. If you are new to CAD pattern drafting, which I'm sure a lot of people are, it is best you start with Simly 2D. That is because it is open source and it is completely free. You don't need to pay any kind of subscription. And then it will give you an opportunity to try your hands on uh, CAD pattern drafting techniques. So if that is what interests you, then don't go away and let's go and let me begin to explain to you the different pattern drafting tools of Simly 2D. This is Simly 2D software open. When you open Simly 2D, all the pattern drafting tools is inactive, as you can see here. So you need to give it a measurement set before you can actually use it. And in my last two videos, I showed you how to generate or how to impute your measurements on Simly 2D. So please go ahead and watch those first two videos because if you don't watch it, you may not be able to understand this one. So go ahead and watch those first two videos and then you come back and watch this one. So it will be easy for you to follow along. So once you open it like this, you go to new and then we are going to label this pattern that we are going to be creating. So I can just label it draft block one let me just put it as a sample or so, sample pattern. Okay. Because I already have a measurement set, it is highlighted. So I can now begin to use the Simly 2 CAD pattern drafting tools. Now this cursor here, you only go to this cursor if you want to, no, before I go into that, once you've done that, you see that there is a dot here. Now, whatever you're going to do is going to start from this dot. Whatever you're going to do, this is where you're going to start from. So that said, let us come to this side. If you can look at this side, you see it starts with points. And if you hover on any of this, it shows you exactly what this is used to do. Like this is for point, length, and angle. So if you click on that, you can draw any length in any direction. If you click on this, you can draw any point on the length you've already drawn. If you click on this, you can put any point, dividing that length into two equal parts. And this will create a perpendicular line to whatever line you have drawn. And this creates, divides two intersecting lines into two equal parts or two equal angles. So I'm going to demonstrate this one, two, three, four, five. So you see exactly how it works. Now this cursor is, if you click on this and you don't want to use it anymore, just go back and click on the cursor and then that particular uh, activity is canceled. So that is what this is here for. So now we have our point. Let us start with this. So you click on it. To activate it, then you bring your cursor here. And when you click on it and you draw it, you can create a line in any direction. As you can see, you can create a line in any direction. 
So let's say I want to create this line here. Once you've drawn it so far and you leave it, now this box opens up. If you can see this box now, first it names the line, the next point of the line, which is A1. This A1 is going to be here, whatever length you're going to give. That's where it's going to level it. It tells you where it starts. That is the A, it starts. And then what length do you want this line to be? So let's say I want this line to be, uh, let's say, I just put um, 19 centimeters for this line. And then what of the angle? Now, let me tell you a little bit more about angles. If you're drawing a line to your right, as I've just done, it's going to be zero degrees that you add there. If you're drawing a line to your left, that will be 180 degrees. If you're drawing a line straight up, that will give you 90 degrees. And if you're drawing any line straight down, that will give you 270 degrees. Sideways, 100 degrees. Straight up, 90 degrees. To your left, 180 degrees. Downward, 270 degrees. I hope that is simple and clear. So once you put that, the length you want, you just click on OK. As you can see now, the line, you cannot see it. That is what you now come up to this place that is shown fit. You click on fit, it shows you the line. Of course, you can always reduce it with your cursor on your computer. If you want it to really come down so you see what you're doing. It doesn't reduce, reduce the, the length of the line. It only reduces what you see so that you can actually work with it. So that's what this line is for. So let's say I want to create a distance from this line. For example, you're creating your bust line, your waistline, or your hip line. And you know the circumference of your bust or waist or hip. And maybe after dividing that circumference by four, you want to mark it on this, your line. That is when this comes up. So you go here. And then you click where you want to start that measurement. Let's say I want to start it here. So I have to draw it to here. Click it. And then put the distance I want. So let's say I just want about five or let me say uh, eight centimeters along that line. I'll just click on OK and that's it. So that means from here to here is eight because I started from here. So always start from where you want your measurement to go to. If I wanted that measurement to be on this side, I will start on this side to here and it will mark the measurement for me. So now we are, we are done with that. I've removed that point so that there will be no confusion. The next one we are going to be looking at is this, this one. This actually divides a line into two. If you want to find the midpoint of this line. So all you have to do, click on that, come to A here, click on it, and then draw it to the next A1. And then it will ask you, this current length divided by two, then you will click on OK. And that is the point that divides this line into two. So now let's go to the next one. This is if you want to draw a line perpendicular to this line. So you just click on it and then click on A. That is what we want. So it's left for you now. Where do you want the perpendicular line to be? Is it at the bottom? It is, is it at the top? So as long as it's perpendicular to this line you want. So just draw it up to this line and it gives you this. So all you have to, to write, to do now is to give it the length that you want this perpendicular line to be. So let's say I want the length to be, let's say 10 centimeters. I will just click on OK. And that is my perpendicular line. I can just do to fit so that I see it can also reduce it to see what it looks like. So you want to do anything perpendicular, that is the what you use. The next one here is a line intersecting these two lines. So once you click on it, you are going to click the line you want it to intersect between that to this place, to this place. 
and it will give you the intersecting line. Then you give it the length that you want that line to be. Let's say I want this line to be six centimeters. It will just click on OK. And it gives me that. I normally use this. This will be very useful when you're drawing a curve. Maybe you want to do a curve on your arm or the, your neck curve. This is when we are going to use this particular tool function. So now I've told you how to use one, two, three, four, five. We are going to leave this two for now. I'm yet to use it to do anything. So I'm going to describe these other ones. The next tool I'm going to explain is this particular one. Now, this tool is mostly used in when you actually want to do a shoulder slope. I need a line to go from one particular line passing through a particular point to another line to form a kind of slope. But you don't know exactly how to get that. It's easier when you're doing manual. You know exactly where you draw a shoulder slope is normally 1.5 centimeters down from your baseline. But here, when you're using CAD, you need to know how to actually construct that slope, that shoulder slope. And that is when this particular uh, two comes in. So if you click on that tool, first you have to highlight which line do you want that particular line to pass through. So let's say we want that line to pass through here from A3, let's say to this A now. And we want that line to come from this line and pass through this place to hit a particular place here that we do not know the length. I hope you're understanding me. When we actually start um, drafting, you will begin to appreciate all these tools. So let's say I want it to start from A1. So that's the line now. That's the line. You know? But the challenge is you don't know the length on this line that you want this line to cut. But you know that it must pass through here, this particular point, to hit on this line here. So that's when you use this tool. So if I click on A4 now, it forms that line and it gives me this particular um, degrees here, hitting on this line to get this. Right now, you might not understand it. For me, it took me quite long to really understand what this is for, but just bear in mind that is what you use it for, to form a slope that you do not know the angle, but you know that it has to pass through a particular place. Because if you're going to most of these pattern drafting books, they will tell you, draw a line that passes through this point to hit on this point. So that is when you can use this particular uh, tool for. So now the next one, let me remove it. The next tool is this one. Now this one is very good. Example, if you have a point here, I need a line to go to that point, to a particular point, to form a perpendicular line to that line. I repeat, let's say you have this A4, and you need a line to start from here, pass through this A4. I need another line that is perpendicular to that line that passes through this A4. As you can see, that there is no point here for you to actually gauge what, what, what is the distance between here and here or the distance between here and here. So to be able to get that distance, that is when you use this. We could use point to point, but you don't exactly know what is the distance. You, know, you don't know it. So that is when this other one comes in. When you watch this video for the first time, some of these things may look a little complicated, but if you watch it severally, and then when you begin to use it to actually do your pattern drafting, you begin to understand the usefulness of these things. So to use this one, just click on it, and it gives you that line, as you can see. So it is this line you want that another line to be perpendicular to. So you click it, A4, it gives you that perpendicular line. So it depends on you now. Where do you want that this line to be? It could be F5, it could be A6, it could be A3. It depends on you, wherever you want that line to be to get this particular uh, measurement that you are looking for. So let's say we want it at uh, A6. You just click on A6 and you get your measurement. If you click out, it gives you a line perpendicular to this line, as you can see. So you now know that what the 
measurement of this line is if you want to use it. So that is what we use that tool for. Now, the next thing is uh, this one. This one is if you have a line that is not straight. You know, this line is straight. This one is straight. It's going to the right. This one is going up. But what if you have a line like this? And you want another line that is perpendicular, you know, to this line. So that is when this particular tool comes in. So I want that line to start from here. And I want that line to be perpendicular to this line to this line. So you see. So you now see that you created a line perpendicular to this line that starts at a particular point. So that is what this tool is for. Now, the last one of this uh, pattern making tools, CAD pattern drafting tools under the point is this particular one. Now, this particular one, you use it if you want to create a point on a line at a particular angle. If you see this line, now this line to this line is 90 degrees. This one here is separating it at 45, 45. But what if you want a line maybe coming from here to hit this line <clears throat> at a particular angle? You know the angle you want, but you want it to come from here and hit this particular line at a particular angle. So that's where this comes. This is when you use this particular Tool. If you click on the tool, first you have to click the line you want to create another line to hit. And now you want a line to come from here, as you can see now. So now you can move it anyhow you want to actually get the angle you want. Let's say you want it to be like so. You want this angle here. You will just click it again. And you have the angle and it gives you A7. A if you want to know what that angle is and adjust it to the angle you want, you just click on it. That is the angle 132. So if you right click on it, go to properties, you will now see the angle is 132. What if you want something like 125? You just remove that and write 125 angle and then click on OK. And it gives you that just itself to give you that angle. So that is what that particular tool is used for. And with that, we've come to the end of this particular section. In my next video, we are going to go through the remaining section of the Simli 2D CAD pattern drafting software. I'm so glad you've watched this video to the end. That shows that you're really interested in learning CAD pattern drafting software. So this is part one of understanding the Simli 2D CAD pattern drafting tools. In my next video, we are going to go through the remaining tools so that you understand how they work. So that when we actually start drafting patterns, you will be able, you will not be lost. You will not be wondering, ah, where did this one come from? So go ahead, watch the video several times, get used to the tools so that you understand how we can actually apply them when we are drafting our basic bodies sloper. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and see you in part two of this video.